Hi and welcome to the second Crafty CAD tutorial. Now this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to create a, a bird puzzle in SketchUp and then we'll take it over into Battle CAD to document it. Um, now a bird puzzle if you're not familiar with them is a, a little wooden puzzle with a bunch of interlocking blocks um, that go together and the challenge is to pull them apart and then reassemble them. Um, there's a, a set of specific steps you need to do to get those to, to go back together. Now I've grabbed the diagrams for the bird puzzle off of a website which, believe it or not, is an IBM research website dedicated solely to the bird puzzle. Um, I think these things must get pretty complicated uh, in the mathematics department, um, but luckily for us the, the blocks themselves are very simple. So the, the website we're looking at is www.research.ibm.com forward slash burr puzzles, that's B-U-R-R-P-U-Z-L-E-S. -E now on the home page, if you click on the explore pre-calculated burrs, you'll get, you'll get a, a list of a few uh, burr patterns. Uh, the one we'll be working in is Bill's Baffling Burr. So if you click on that, uh, a Java app will load up. You may have to click run this app um, to get this to work, but as you can see, we've got a couple of isometric views showing that the assembled bird puzzle and a diagram of each of the blocks. So if we click on that diagram, we get a blown up diagram. Um, so we can see the breakdown of each of the blocks, and as you can see, they're very simple, they're very modular. So um, we'll be working off uh, a block size of 20 mil by 20 mil square, so 20 mil square piece of timber by 60 mil long. And each of these little blocks represents a 10, 10 mil square. So, um, as you can see, we've got a raised section here, which is 10 mils long and 20 mils back into the screen. We've got a step down of 10 mil and then 10 mil flat. And this cutout here is 20 mil long by 10 mil back into the screen. Um, so that's that's pretty much the layout for all of these. So these things are very simple to model in uh, in SketchUp and they should be pretty simple to document in, uh, in DoubleCAD. Um, the idea of this is just to show the principles of the workflow between SketchUp and DoubleCAD so you can apply this to more complicated models and in a future tutor tutorial I will get into a more complicated model and taking that from SketchUp to DoubleCAD. But for now we'll start a new drawing in SketchUp and we want to make sure we're working in millimeters so under Window Preferences click on Templates and you want to scroll until you see the product design and woodwork template units millimeters. So I click on that and hit OK. Now I'm going to assume you've got um, at least a, a basic working knowledge of SketchUp. If you don't, you can log onto the Google SketchUp website and they've got a bunch of great videos to get you started with drawing shapes and using the push pull tool to, to create 3D objects. Um, but for now, we'll just we'll get straight into working on our first block. So we'll, We'll start with this red block here. Um, so we'll start with a rectangle at the, at the origin point. Now we want to make this block uh, 20 mil wide by 60 mil long. So I'm just going to type 20, 60 before I pick. And you'll see we've got our block there. So using the push pull tool, I'll drag that up, make it 20 mil thick. So that's sort of the blank template for all of our blocks. Um, they, all the blocks will come from this template, so we'll make a copy of these as we go along. Now, there's a couple of ways we can actually draw these uh, the cutouts. We can use the, the measure tool, click on an edge and drag it out and type in 10 mil. Do that on the other side, type in 10 mil, or it may even snap to 10 mil. And we'll use the pencil tool to draw a line across there. Line across there. This is a push pull tool to drop that down 10 millimeters. Um, again, we can use the pencil tool. The midpoint, we'll draw that back 10. And if we use the move tool, if we hold control, it'll create a copy of it. And now these snap to 10 mil automatically, so it's nice and easy for us. Um, I'll just erase that middle line. Push pull, and we can drag that out to be our cutout. So that there is our first block, so it's very simple to, to make these. Uh, one more thing we need to do, I'll just erase these 
guidelines. One more thing we need to do is turn this into a component now that we've created it. So I'm going to select it all. You can either select it by dragging a box around it or clicking three times on it will select the whole object. Clicking once selects a surface or an edge. Double clicking a surface selects the surface and all the edges on it. Double clicking an edge selects any connected surfaces and triple clicking on anything will select the whole thing. So I'm going to select it, go right click and go make component. I'll call this component my block one component and hit create. Um, the reason we turn these into components is when we take it into double CAD, double CAD will treat each of these objects as a block. So they're just a bit easy to manipulate that way. Um, I'll also set up some layers which will also translate into layers when we take it into double CAD. So I'm going to go up to Windows, hit Layers. Now you can see we've only got one layer in there at the moment, layer 0. I'm going to create another layer, call it Block 1. And I'm just going to repeat that step until we have six block layers. So once we've got our six block layers, we can just shut that window. Now I'm going to click on the component, and again under Window, go Entity Info. And you can see which layer it's currently sitting on. It's sitting on layer 0, so you want this one to be on block 1 layer. So that there is our first block, and we set it up as a component on the right layer. Now we'll move on to the next block. With the next block, rather than recreating from scratch, we can actually make a copy of this first block. Uh, and we do that by selecting it, using the Move tool, and holding Control while dragging, we can create a copy of it. Now we've got six blocks in total. Um, but two of the blocks are actually mirror images of each other. So I'm going to, before I do any other commands, I'm going to type in X and then I'm going to type in Core. So that gives us four more copies of the original. Now using the Select tool, I'm just going to select all of those and explode them. So that breaks them down back into their surfaces and edges. Uh, we'll look at our next piece of the puzzle. So we're going to move on to this green one here. So this one doesn't have the notch in the front, so I just quickly drag that out, use the erase tool, and then we use the pencil tool from the midline, 10 mil out, repeat that again. So one of these we're going to lift up, the other we're going to drop down and make into a hole. So I'll we'll turn that into a hole, and that one into a raised section. Use the erase to get rid of the unnecessary edge. So that's the second block. The third block, very similar to the first, we can quickly do this by getting rid of that notch, using the erase tool, using the move tool to move this surface in 10mm and this surface in 10mm. That's the third one done. Now the fourth one we'll see is very similar to this first one, it's just got this one raised area in the middle. So I click drag there the midpoint to the edge and raise that up 10mm use this raised surface as an inference and that's the last one. Um, now the last puzzle block here is the, the one I mentioned before which is a direct mirror image of this one. So I'm going to select this, use the move tool, hold control and drag and now I'm going to right click on this and go flip along the green direction. So you can see it's flipped it along uh, the green axis here and made that a mirror image. So that's our last block done. So this number five, um, it's a bit different. It's got a notch out in the front with a, a block sticking over the top. So we'll quickly get rid of this notch out to start with. Erase those extra edges. We'll draw the raised area at the back. And then we'll draw the raised area at the front here, which is 20 mil long. So I'll start from the midpoint there and drag out 20 mil. Now the reason I'm getting rid of all these unwanted edges is because when we go into double CAD, those will show up as solid lines which can make the drawing look a bit cluttered. So we use the, the pencil tool this time on the front face to make this notch in the front. So I use push pull up in 10 mil to get that 10 mil to that. So that's all our blocks created, so it's really simple and quick to do these things.
Now I'm just going to turn all these into components and put them on the right layers. So this is block 2. And I right click, go Entity Info, and drop that onto block 2 layer. Again, block 3. Block 4. Block 5. And finally, block 6. And you can see I've misnamed that layer, so I'm just going to go Windows, Layers, and just correct that. So that's going to be block 6. And that's pretty much all we need to do in SketchUp for now. So I'm going to hit File, save that as a, as a SketchUp file, and then we can open that directly in DoubleCAD.